for a big game like this. Uh, so everybody was just laser focused. You know, it's, it's nothing to, there's nothing to talk about. It's nothing to, to joke about. Like we already know what we came here for. It's a business trip. So, you know, the ride over is just everybody just getting into their zone and, and locking in on, you know, what, what, what's ahead. So um, I think that was the vibe um, coming over. And just once we got here, uh, everybody just locked into what they wanted to do to get prepared for the game. Carly Bell Marquis on Zoom. Hey, Kai and Coach. First off, congratulations on the win today. Um, Kalia, first off, what, we've talked a lot about the depth and especially the veteran experience of this team. The fourth quarter really seemed to be that's where the veteran experience kicked into the third gear. How important has that been to you guys in this playoffs, but specifically in, in game three? It's been super important, you know. I, I just sat in one of the timeouts where, you know, they went on a little run, and I, I see James and Sloot and Candace, you know, putting it all together. You know, James is drawing something up, and uh, Candace is chiming in, and Sloot is saying, we're going to do this. And we're like, and to see them, like, I'm sitting there, and I'm watching them, watching this all develop. And then we go out there, and we execute, and then we come back down. And, like, just to see them, them like, really, like, connect and like it's it's just like I'm like wow like I can just I'm just learning I'm just sitting here and just trying to do what I whatever I can do but you know I think that's the experience and that's the leadership that we need um and it really just carried us down the stretch and then also it looked like after the game you went up and, and saw some friends and family in the in the stands at Barclays what was that whole you know interaction like uh in the stands just seeing everyone there in support of you uh, first of all, shout out to Carly for giving me my 45 tickets. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the executive of the year who probably paid for the extras. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's nothing like playing in front of your, your family and your friends and having that support, um, knowing that somebody's out there in the stands. You know, I had little girls come from my camp. You know, it's a 9 o'clock game. It's late. I had little girls come from my camp and just be excited. My friends, my family, my nieces. Um, just to see them, to see me win on, on, a, on a big stage and be successful, um, it was just amazing. I was just glad that they got out for this late game. And then final question, Coach Wade, um, Allie quickly cashed those three, those back-to-back -back three pointers in the fourth quarter. It seemed like that was where the game just got put to bed. We talked a lot about just her shooting and you've called her the best shooter you've ever seen. I mean, what else can you just say about Allie Quigley and what she can bring to this team offensively? She was amazing. She was locked in uh, from the beginning. She picked and chose her spots. Uh, and those shots were very key to our run. But like I said, like she's – everybody knows she's an amazing offensive player. But when she locks in the way she did defensively down the stretch, then – it takes her to another level, and and you just have to respect the shot making ability that she has. So, um, and, and she complements that by being a great screener uh, and being somebody that moves off the ball really well. So, uh, couldn't come at a better time, but that's something that we come to expect from her. Sorry, one last question um, for either one of you. I know you guys want to celebrate the win, but we also got to look ahead to the semifinals. What are some of the positives that you saw out of today that you want to take into the semifinals outside of just the intensity and energy that you guys have? You got it. <laughs> well, um, I, I think uh, it's a lot of things we could take away from it. Uh, our composure, our, our ability to stay together and really play for each other. Uh, like we were in passing lanes and they couldn't they couldn't get comfortable and even when um you know even when they made their run you you can tell it was a good team that was fighting for their life but uh we were able to respond and we took our defensive intensity up to another level and we were able to get steals and deflections and they were throwing balls out of bounds and so i i just think that we have to build on that and we have to stay that constant team because um, us in the last eight minutes going on that 22-7 uh, run was, you know, was, was I think it was the, you know, it was the thing that just put us over the top. And uh, our defensive intensity and the way we were there for each other was just, uh, was just top tier. Thank you both and congratulations again. Thank you. Mike Hughes, one question, please. Mike. Hey, guys, congrats on the win. My question's for Ka. You know, the other night, Sloop called you the engine of this team and really one of the players that just makes everything go. But having five players alongside you in double figures, how much does that help you free up your game and just allow you to be yourself? Uh, I think it, it's, it's great, you know, when you have just 
you're playing with a lot of great players. I don't think that anybody can just key in on one person on our team. That's what makes us so special. So um, I'm just glad that I can play with such great players and I'm able to still um, do me in a sense. But I just know that consistently I just got to bring the energy and um, be that person for us, whether it's offensively, defensively. So um, thanks, Luke. <laughs> thanks, Kyle. Stephen Garner, last on Zoom. One question, please. Hey, y'all, congratulations on the win. My question is for Coach. So you guys were really nailing your rotations today on the backside of your um, hedging, whether it was soft or hard hedging. And even more so than that, you guys were disciplined. Only had nine fouls, and that's something that you've harped on all season and defended without fouling. Uh, can you just speak to the overall discipline in the execution that you guys have shown over the last two games? I think you broke it down good. Uh, no, I, I, I thought, you know, we were disciplined. I, I thought we were on a string, um, and I felt like our closeouts were very, um, you know, they were very disciplined, and they were, um, yeah, we, we, we closed out with intent, and everything was very deliberate in everything that we were doing, and the communication was really good. And that's, you know, we've done it two games in a row, and I, I just think we have to stay there and just build on it. So for every foundation, you 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 build another tier, and it, it becomes who you are, especially at this time of the year. And uh, we we will uh, we will play well for the rest of the playoffs. So, um, but as long as we continue to uh, trust each other and 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 play with intention and and uh, uh, play with the aggressiveness that we have been. Hey there, Meredith Cash from Insider. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, this question is for both of you. You know, Allie was just up here saying that you approached game one sort of like a regular season game and, you know, basically said no one's winning games that way. How do you avoid falling into a similar trap going into a new series um, and keeping up this intensity that you've had in games two and three? Uh, like I said before, I think we we saw a version of ourselves that we fell in love with and that we want to grow on. And it's, it's just no going back. You know, we, we, done, we done set the tone. So anything under that is just unacceptable. So I think that we know how we want to play and we know what we're, what we're capable of. And, and that's what we're going to do. Last question, second row. This question's for James. Uh, you talked about coaching in Russia and as somebody who has had positive experiences there, um, but also in, in light of what has happened with, with Brittany Griner, what do you make of, um, you know, men's professional players and, and maybe even some women, uh, American signing in Russia uh, going forward? I mean, uh, I, I'm not one to judge. I can only say that it's something that I wouldn't do. Um, I'm not in their shoes. So I don't I don't understand there. I, so I, I I think it's kind of it will be disrespectful for me to comment on whatever their 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 life is and what they're doing. Um, you know, it, it would be tough for me to go there, um, have a personal relationship with BG. I coached her for a while, and um, you know, and and in, in light of everything that's going on, it's it's really unfortunate. So. Uh, but I, I don't I don't know who signed there and who's who's going there and I don't know what's going on so I I'm sorry I wish I can answer that question but um, I just know from from my standpoint that it would be really tough for me uh, to put myself in that situation especially right now and especially with BG being so far away from home um, we want to get her here and get her home and hopefully. <coughs> Um, you know, things have been quiet, but they hopefully um, um, I have a lot of faith that they've been quiet for a reason. Um, so I just look forward to her being home and uh, being around her family and just getting on U.S. soil. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Kalia. Thank you, everyone, for joining.